Well, let's see what one peg had to say. Iron Mace are in some real trouble. Dark and darker news. Good morning, everyone. My name is One Peg, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the Iron Mace versus Nexon case. I know that you guys are loving these videos, so thank you very much for coming and checking them out. If you do find this interesting, I would ask that you please consider subbing the channel. However, in today's video, we're going to talk about how if Iron Mace is unable to push this game to early access in the next 20 or so days, including today, we will likely not see Dark and Darker coming to light within the next six months to calendar year or more. Yeah. And I will explain why. Yeah, please tell me why you think they're going to release it in 21 days. I don't think so. Okay, good morning. Give me some hope. Uh, it should go without saying that I am not an attorney, so I want to make sure that we get this out of the way I said uh, that. right at the start. I have been doing this right along, just really finding this to be interesting. I like reading about case law, up, and I Sizzle? like summarizing things. I have a talent for being able to make things that are incredibly complex uh, much more simplistic and easier to digest. That's one of the reasons why I worked in the financial world for as long as I did. But anyway, there is a post on Reddit that I want to share with you guys that was made by a guy named King Rajesh. Now, King Rajesh is a self-appointed attorney. Obviously, there's no credentialing or anything. We can't really just check up on them and make sure that they're actually an attorney. But according True. to them, they are an attorney. Now, they do say that they're not an IP litigator in the, the course of this thread and other associated threads. But they are somebody that has been following the case because they found this to be interesting. And uh, I found the reading in this thread to be uh, incredibly interesting. So, uh, and also, hey, man, thank you for uh, for giving me a little, you know, you know, in the in the thread. I appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys might remember me from my previous post. In this previous post, he goes into talking about uh, Darker and Darker's early access is being delayed and why. Uh, but we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, he says, I usually like to parse out a judge's orders to kind of read the tea leaves to see where the wind is blowing. Usually you wouldn't like to see a judicial order liberally quoting from one party's papers in this case. But again, this was an ex parte motion, meaning that the other party hasn't been able to have a say yet. So the motion... I like how he, re <laughs> he read that sentence and then instead of reading the next sentence, he just says it like he's it's his own thought. <laughs> he's like, but it's an ex parte one, even though it literally says that in the next sentence. Filed was done so without the other party being involved involved in it the the entire idea of a judge quoting only one party and not the other is kind of weird but in this case it's not i guess he also oh shit my bad fourth my Rio, bad thank you because the the judge the magistrate judge and if i was i read that i was like wait what does fourth mean a oh patreon.com slash real <laughs> yeah, fuck him, i don't want to see him. three bucks you can see all of my notes and the history of the case and all the pacer documentation yeah like he was reading that sentence and then instead of re continuing the sentence he just read the next or like said the next sentence as if it was his own patient that i've been Sent directly from the like an ex parte and whatnot. Anyway, I know that on my he own. He talks about how the court magistrate cited something from a case. Sizzle, I'm so Rio, fucking. You get all, you're getting all the shit I wish I could get. International I want a chair. And I want to go XLR. How, uh, I'm so jealous. Serving people and extending kind of circumstances and uh, why you would need to go through such lengths. The magistrate ended up talking about how saying the court's intervention was necessary due to plaintiff's inability to serve an elusive international defendant striving to evade service of process. Mm -hmm. Now, he goes on to say that Nexon didn't actually accuse Iron Mace of trying to be evasive. However, the magistrate seemed to bring that in anyway. and said But see, that's the part that I think is like speculation. I think that that's what Personally, I think that's what Nexon is accusing them of doing, and that's why they were put that in their motion, and the judge probably interpreted it like that. I don't, I don't know. I doubt the judge just interpreted that on her own. Maybe. Could be, but I don't think anybody, nobody knows that as fact said or insinuated that Iron Mace was being evasive. Not that it really matters, though, because the court magistrate that I don't know what chair, but I seen it earlier and it seemed pretty good and more comfortable than this one. Nice, dude. My old chair that I broke is like one of my biggest regrets. I wish I never broke that chair. I wish I never started punching it because this chair that I have now is the fucking worst. That I'm constantly this like sitting like going this. To be I fucking the assigned hate it. Judge I can't case, lean back in uh, this chair. Be heard I used once, to be able to like uh, lean back Iron and Mace I was like chilling all the time. To the summons now that I'm they've like, now been sent. So... He goes on to say, that being said, I would imagine hey. Nexon will have served Iron Mace through the various means and will file a certification of service within days, if not within a few hours. Pretty sure that's Meaning already that been done. As soon as they had that order in hand, they're going to send off all the emails and direct messages through Discord and direct messages through Twitter to say, you have been served. And I would love a chair sponsorship, please, Secret Lab. know that these are all valid right? and real and good. Herman Miller. And whether you say that you've been served by Pillows? them Pillows? Okay, that's not as bad as mine. Going to yeah. file with the or, I mean, that's, mine's not that bad. We're supposed to do 
which begins a 21 day timer. Now, for those of you that haven't been following along, the way that it works is if you've been summoned to court, once you've been served with those papers uh, that satisfies the court's rules on all of that stuff, you have 21 days to respond and or appear, which means that their attorney, and if you notice here, this will do three things. It will start the 21 day clock for IM, Iron Mace, to appear via counsel and fire either an answer or a motion to dismiss and it will cause an Article Three District Court judge to be assigned, and it will start to cause Iron Mace to start shelling out hefty legal fees mm -hmm. for an MTD or motion to dismiss. So prior to something like this ending up in an actual full-on trial, what the defense will try to do is file for a motion to dismiss, meaning they want to try to convince the judge to throw the whole thing out based on uh, trying to say that Nexon's case has no merit. Now, whether or not that ends up occurring, uh, it, we don't really know. I oh, would send assume, it, Sizzle. Though, I'll look at it, too. If Nexon is going after, after this, this video. as heavily and as hard as they are and hiring the firm that they have, and actually, uh, and I agree with the take that King Rajesh makes further down in this thread where he talks about how you don't hire a firm like the one that Nexon has. The firm that Nexon has hired is a firm that goes by the name of Arnold and Porter. And Nexon has its own staffed in-house attorneys that internationally, United States, uh, in Korea and otherwise, where they would uh, look at the merits of their own case internally, decide whether or not it would be okay or prudent enough to shell out the amount of money that they have to an outside attorney to pursue the case that they did. Secondarily to that, the folks at Arnold and Porter, who are, from what I have seen, what I gather, is one of like the top five uh, litigating firms probably in the world that would litigate IP law like this. Arnold and Porter, as a large, very large, mega corporate, uh, bougie, super firm, would look at this and scrutinize the merits of this case themselves before they decided whether or not they were going to take the case on. Because they oh, want to take you know on what? That's a good counterpoint to what I said about how I was like, yeah, I feel like Nexon would hire this law firm, whether they, it was for a shakedown or they felt like they had a good case. But that wasn't taking into account if that law firm felt like it was a good case. And so the law firms will choose like to take a case or not to take a case after they've looked into it. But even then, even if they, a, law, a law firm sees that they're going to lose, they're still going to make money. So they, the, the, oftentimes they'll still take the case. Like the, the lawyers take losing cases all the time and they, they get paid. So I, I, they, they, they could just be looking at this and be like, wow, Nexon, this big mega corporation, let's fucking cash in a little bit. I don't care if we lose, we're still gonna, they're still going to pay us, you know? Frivolous in order Maybe. for it to potentially Maybe. tarnish their name. But make that's another point. Losing cases hurts the, it, not really though. Law firms lose cases all the time and it doesn't, stop them from getting uh people to hire them if that makes sense so they're, they're going to be looking at this trying to consider but whether they, or not taking it and a law firm could be worried about their reputation make them look bad or not and in them taking it assuming that they're going to go after this them assuming that and saying yes we will be your attorney actually speaks pretty loudly unfortunately since i am now has to appear and maybe file a motion to does. dismiss within 21 days I would predict that early access for this game will not happen unless I am wins this lawsuit, either by a motion to dismiss, summary judgment, or at trial. The status quo has now been established, and anything that I am does to change that status quo, i.e. releasing Dark and Darker for any purpose, will be held against them in the lawsuit and likely result in hefty sanctions. This is why I want to know, why does one peg think that they need to release it within 20 days? To me, that seems like if they do that, they're fucking themselves even more. So two things like that could make the, the, the current magistrate judge and the future judge be like, oh, you, what are you guys doing? Like, we're ruling against you just because you did that. Going to happen. Well, poss possibly a third. The first is when they go for this motion to dismiss in court, they will either have the motion ready to roll or they will seek an extension on getting the motion to dismiss together that they believe would be good enough to submit to the court. So that could be 30, 60 days. Okay, like I, you that. know what? I think I understand his angle. If they do the motion to dismiss within 21 days and it gets dismissed, then they'll be able to release it. I think that's why he's saying if they don't release it within 20 days, it's not going to come out for a long time. The second thing that will likely end up happening is the moment that everybody gets into court, Nexon will try to don't file. Don't know, though. I might just wait a bit and get a nicer slash better one in the future that would probably last longer. That's a, you know, that's smart. That's smart thinking ahead. Let me, let's look at it real quick. 
Oh, that looks like, is that a Herman Miller? It literally looks like, like the Herman Miller I see a lot of people get. I see people with Herman Millers that look just like that. Herman Millers are fucking expensive, though. ...for a temporary injunction, meaning that they want the court to kind of put a stake in the ground. Wait, hold on. The moment that every something like that, the same good enough to submit to the court. So that could be Here, I to possibly a third. The first is when they go for this motion to dismiss in court, they will either have the motion ready to roll or yeah. they will seek an extension on getting the motion to dismiss together that they believe. Or, be okay, yeah, they'll either get it dismissed or like we read, they could get an extension. That guy said he'd ask for at least 60 days. Good enough to submit to the court. Okay. So that could be 30, 60 days, something like that. The second thing that will likely end up happening is the moment that everybody gets into court, Nexon will try to file for a temporary injunction, meaning that they want the court to kind of put a stake in the ground and say, you may not move past this point to Iron Mace, meaning you cannot monetize this. You cannot move this game to early access, which is what they are referring to. In this case, Rajesh is referring to by saying status quo. The idea here is that you want to keep a snapshot of whatever is going on with the game and in this case exactly the same way as it is through the entire duration of the case now remember uh in the last video i mentioned that nexon's entire take here and the reason why they're pushing as hard as they are is because they're trying to prevent iron mace from going to early access because i said it would change how the case would be handled mm -hmm. the moment that nexon is able to serve iron mace it creates a snapshot in time that says okay this is what we are talking about. This yeah. is what we're litigating. The, if they weren't able to serve them because of the Hague Convention taking somewhere between four to six months, and Iron Mace was able to push this to early access by basically saying, well, we weren't served, so hmm. If they were able to do that, if they had been able to do that, they would have had a marketed product. The product would have already been established. There would have been monetization of that product. And with the product already out in market, that would have been the snapshot. The game already would have been in everyone's hands, and we all would have been playing it already. Nexon's trying to prevent that by saying, well, prior to them going to early access, we can stop this from happening. They can't. God damn, dude. Oh, that's so dumb. Because if it was on Steam, they could have released it. They could have released early access like weeks ago if they wanted to. But since they've been, it's not on Steam and they have to make their own launcher and they've probably been scrambling to like make their own launcher the past month. Like they just ran out of time. Monetize it. To think of this another way, let's say that I have the world's greatest formulaic cup of coffee right here in my hand, and I employ two or three oh, other thank people you, that worked for me to develop this perfect oh, cup of coffee. I don't have coffee. any water. If the <laughs> I need to go fill up my water. For me decided they didn't like me anymore, and prior to me being able to actually market my now okay, what is this? for me cup of can't monetize. What's he talking about? To think of this another way, let's say that I have the world's greatest formulaic cup of coffee right Hold here. Hold on, I want to go back a little that bit they more. would have had a marketed product. The product would have already been established. There would have been monetization of that product. And with the product already out in market, that would have been the snapshot. The game already would have been in everyone's hands and mm -hmm. we all would have been playing it already. Nexon's trying to prevent that by saying, well, prior to them going to early access, we can stop this from happening. They can't monetize it. To think of this another way, let's say that I have the world's greatest formulaic cup of coffee right here in my hand. And I employ two or three other people that worked for me to develop this perfect cup of coffee. If the three people that were working for me decided they didn't like me anymore, and prior to me being able to actually market my now are indeed a perfect cup of coffee, they decide to take the formula leave and market it themselves, creating a second brand. Now I go to sue them, but in the process of that, I don't file that injunction. They could take my formulaic perfect cup of coffee, put it out to market, and in the process of this uh, legal battle taking place over the course of six months, a year, maybe more, maybe this is a, the greatest cup of coffee that has ever existed and the sales end up reflecting that. They make hundreds of millions of dollars off of my coffee formula. Now in that process- Yeah, but it's not Nexon's formula, okay? Fuck off. That gives them the ability to mount their legal defense. We, we went over this. It potentially ends up bogging Weeks me ago. down. And it gives them fuel to be able to fight this thing through court. Now, me being uh, self-serving in one side, even if it I is, I don't do care. Not want that to be able to happen, so I file an injunction to make sure that they can't profit off of my formula while we figure all of this out. Makes sense. So the unfortunate reality here is that the snapshot, this actual picture, the status quo that gets established, gets established the moment that they actually appear in court, mm -hmm. which means that the injunction that these people will be trying to to <clears throat> 
which means that the injunction that Nexon is seeking will end up being filed or attempted to be filed when they appear. This also means that within, like I said, the next 20 days, Iron Mace would have to push this to an early access state before they were to appear in court, even if it's just- See, that to me, I, th I don't know, maybe he's right, but I feel like even before the injunction is served in court in person, I feel like if they release it now, the judge can still throw sanctions on them. Just Maybe, the I don't know. Time. That's where because I'm confused, Because it's very likely that the firm Arnold & Porter that is representing Nexon already has this temporary relief order drafted and ready to go. But let's say that the, the temporary relief order, the injunction, uh, ends up being filed, and Iron Mace just says, the hell with it, we don't care, and they thumb their nose at it, and they decide that they're going forward anyway. I just still, like I said, I still think that like they can't do it now, now that they've been officially served. I don't think they need to have to wait for the injunction, I think. What happens They're then? fucked at this well, point. Well, in those cases, the judge can implement what are known as sanctions. If and not, the why didn't if not why didn't they release it yesterday? Judge more or less gets full discretion in terms of whatever those sanctions are. Sometimes it's fines and legal fees, and other times they can just award the case to Nexon and tell Iron Mace to go pound salt. I'm not kidding. They've done that in the past. Now. That being said, those are the things that Iron Mace is up against and the things that Nexon are going to try to argue. It could also be argued that the status quo could also come down to the schedule that Iron Mace has already pre-established. Remember, in Nexon's statement, they ended up citing tweets and whatnot from folks at Iron Mace saying that they intended to release the game in an early access state by about this time this year with a full release by year end. So it could be argued that the quote-unquote status quo would be to go along with the schedule that Iron Mace has already pre-established for themselves. Okay, now I'm not an attorney, and I'm not trying to be one, right? Uh, we all can agree. I'm just somebody that finds this stuff to be interesting. I'm trying to spread the good word, and I'm just trying to break this down into palatable bites. But that being said, I do foresee a couple of things. If I was going to venture a guess based on everything that I've seen here, the likely scenario is that when Iron Mace shows up in court finally within the next 20 days, and I don't know whether they're going to be able to push to an early access state prior to then, if I were them and I was scraping or trying to get together some cash, I probably would try to knock this thing in as quickly as I can before my attorneys end up showing up at court. Yeah, but the, I feel like the, if they do that, they're not only going to be trying to raise money for their current fees for their lawyer, but they're also going to be raising money for the sanctions that the judge puts on them for releasing it early. I don't know. But that's that where I'm not, I'm, I'm still case. confused, I so guess. So they really got to weigh the pros and, and it, cons. And it, it, it literally, like he's just said, damning the case. It could, like, if they release it earlier, the judge could just be like, what are you doing? And then initially be on the side of Nexon. At the same time, when my attorney shows up to court know, uh, in the next 20 days or so, uh, I would assume that Iron Mace will end up filing an extension for their motion to dismiss. They will probably end up trying to get an extra 30 or 60 days. They're going to put a team of people on it, and that's going to cost somewhere around six figures. Or Iron Mace just doesn't. I love work. that he's saying all this stuff as if it's like his own. It, we literally, it's all in that post. Walk away. I don't know. At the same time, Nexon, when so they these arrive are, these are my court, thoughts. their attorneys are going to end up trying to file a preliminary injunction. Uh, something that basically says, or the court would order, that Iron Mace, Dark and Darker, can't do anything until after the court case has been decided. Now, obviously, the folks at Iron Mace are going to try to fight that. This is our. So only yeah, I guess maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like they can already do that. They like if they release it, the judge can already throw sanctions on them. But maybe the judge can't do that until this injunction is filed in court by Nexon. IP. I don't know. This is the game that we've been making. This is what we're passionate about. We're trying to get this out into the market. Nexon's big and bad and burly, and they're just arguing about nomenclature. They're not really trying to uh, protect anything. What trade secrets? They haven't proven that we have source code. You know, all of those arguments obviously are going to come into play. However, in the case of trade secrets laws, what I have seen from other people that have been talking about this, and unfortunately, I can't find the journal article right now, but when it comes to trade secrets and injunctions, injunctions preliminary injunctions like this, uh, another attorney um, written up in one of these other Reddit threads mentioned that trade secrets uh, injunctions like these are granted upwards of like 80% of the time Fuck. in United States courts. So it's a very, very likely... Iron and Mace's I can understand. I can understand why that like the, the courts wanting to be like, hey, put a halt on this until we figure out what's going on. I, I, I can understand that. Cemented to the floor until after this case has been decided. 
Now, of course, they have the ability to ignore all of that. But in doing so, they end up risking everything, yeah. depending on how... Risking not only a bunch of legal fees, but them just losing the case just off of that merit alone. Whether or not them the judge releasing decides it early. that they want to be the judge will be pissed, you or know? if they want to play ball like they have in the past with companies like eBay, Apple, and Samsung. We'll have to see. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. And that, but so that's much, also Kevin. interesting, what he just said right there about the bigger companies... I, I bet in those lawsuits, the injunctions were didn't go through, and they the companies were able to still going on with their product until the court case was over. And then when those court cases were over, like wasn't there a whole huge lawsuit between Apple and and uh, Android, and then Apple won, and then didn't Android pay it to Apple in like pennies? They like dropped it all off, all the like what they owed them in pennies, like at their their front door. I'm Risking pretty sure that's everything. what happened. Depending on how, but and there it seems like there wasn't an injunction put in place. Both were able to keep going, and then there were just fees at the end that they had to pay. Uh, the and then judge, I bet, I bet Android was forced to stop what they were doing, or I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not to be familiar with that. Or if they want to play ball like they have in the past with companies like eBay, Apple, and Samsung, we'll have to see. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. Thanks so much for coming and checking it out. If you would be so kind as to follow me on my socials at one peg MG on Twitter at one peg on TikTok, And yep. as always, I stream every day at twitch.tv slash one peg. And if you would be kind enough right. to sub the channel. So to me, dark and darker is gone. Uh, if we do get dark and darker, it's not going to be for like six months plus. And that's going to be after the court case is won by Iron Mace. Taking the long route is probably the best option. They need the judges on their side. Yeah. The judges could ar already be against them, just like based off of what he said about uh, siding with trademark and injunctions like that in the past. But that doesn't mean just because they like usually side with the injunction, putting a stoppage on the, the, uh, the, the uh, person being prosecuted or the company, um, that doesn't mean that the trial always goes in favor of that. Once it goes to trial, it could go either way. But um, I don't know. Maybe there is a history of trials siding with the uh, the uh, defendant. Maybe. Um, uh, or the prosecutor. Sorry, not the defendant. I said that opposite. Um... But yeah, to me, it's just, I don't think it's coming out. I'm, I'm in Camp Doomer now. I, I was always Camp Doomer. I didn't even think the last playtest was going to happen, but then it did. And then uh, my other resident Doomer, Jay Griffio, was like, oh, I, I changed my mind. I think the game's coming out this month. And I was like, what? You were saying the exact opposite last week. And he was like, oh, well, Dev Terrence whispered in my ear. I had a dream, and Dev Terrence whispered in my ear. Made me feel a little different, but... Don't think that's happening. And uh, like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but to me it seems like now that they've been served, they can't release it in early access. Even if they could, with like before that injunction, it's not in their best interest to do so. Um, but they need legal fees somehow, right? Like I said, though, that fucks them over because when their whole idea of releasing this game is to make money for themselves in their studio whereas now everything they're they're making from the coffee sponsorship and now possible early access is just going to go toward legal fees maybe they could hope that they spend all this money on early access on legal fees and then eventually it gets released on steam and then they make a bunch of money there maybe we'll see but uh to me it's gone, at least for now, and you won't be hearing me be like, oh, it's coming in June 9th. That's not going to happen. Um, and that, that's the thing, Samurai. We've been talking about this a lot. There's two parts to the case. There is the, the part where Nexon is accusing uh, Iron Mace of stealing literal code and assets, which we went through that whole court document and it seems like that is baseless it does not seem like next or iron mace actually stole anything and it's all code they made themselves or had purchased from the unreal marketplace so i have a feeling that part of the case might get thrown out but then when it comes to the trademark secrets that's where it's like like 
Blizzard making Diablo 4 and then Path of Exile coming out, like an exact copy of Diablo. Blizzard, I guess, under this whole trademark secrets thing, could go after a game like Path of Exile and say, look, they're stealing our trade secrets. That is something where it's going to get debated. But uh, to me, that's just ridiculous. And I feel like it should be the unspoken rule that these companies know not to do that because then it's just going to make... Uh, like, Nexon has games that are, like, direct copies of, like, Nintendo games and things like that. But Nintendo's not coming after them for trade secrets. So, it, to me... This whole lawsuit is just about Nexon realizing, oh, fuck, we fucked up the bag. We were going to shelve this game that this team went and started making after we fired them, and now it's doing so good. We fucked up. This should be our game. Damn it. We need to get this back somehow. Or not get it back somehow. Just stop it from coming out altogether. That's what it seems like to me. And when we, we read through the case, it's on my YouTube, on my exclamation mark YouTube, us going over all of the court documents like a month ago. I just h- published the highlight earlier today, but we went over it like a month ago. And uh, that was my conclusion, is that like the trademark secrets part, that's going to be the part that's debated. But I, I just don't see like how that's going to rule in Nexon's favor when it's like, oh, you're trying to argue that them having a wizard character is the same as your game? Like, What are you talking about? That's literally what it was. It was like, oh, their game has a a character called Wizard, just like our game had. Their game has a rogue, just like ours. Oh, their game is called Fighter, but we had it called this, but they just changed the name to evade trade secrets. Like, it's it's just like, what? It was so dumb reading through that. It just didn't make any sense. But I said at that same time, I was like, Nexon has so much money, they could just be doing this just to hold them up. Like they might, Nexon might know that they're going to lose, but they could just be trying to hold them up in court and incur a, a bunch of legal fees toward Iron Maze just goes out of business. Um, uh, see, that's dumb as fuck. There's tons of Diablo style games. Why is Pillar? Exactly. It's, it's the reason why Iron Maze is being targeted is because Nexon realized they fucked up. They had a game being developed that they decided to shelve. The lead developer of that game got fired. That developer went and took the people that were working on that game, started their own company. I, to my knowledge, made the game from scratch. Even if they didn't, I don't give a fuck. Legally, they'd be in the wrong. If they did steal code from Nexon, morally, I don't give a fuck. But according to everything we know, Nexon or Iron Mace didn't steal anything. It was either, and at the end of the day, even if they did, it was code made by those people before they got fired. It's just under Nexon, you know? <laughs> but uh, that's why I say I don't really care if they stole it. I personally am not uh, someone that cares about corporations being stolen from. I, as an individual, would never steal from a person, like another individual, a friend, a random person I don't know. But I don't have any problem stealing from a corporation or other people stealing from a corporation. Morally, that does not affect me. Um, corporations factor in theft uh, in, into, their, uh, into their quarterly sales. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, to me, it's just Nexon realizes they fucked up and they either want to release this game themselves or just stop it from coming out altogether uh, so they don't feel like they failed. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like I said, I'm still very confused on whether Nexon or whether Iron Mace can even legally release the game at early access at this point now that they've been served. According to one peg, they still have 21 days to release it before uh, a temporary injunction could be filed by Nexon. To me, I think that that's already in effect. Like, I don't think the injunction has been served yet or issued, but I think that they can't release it. Even if, even if they could release it, it's going to fuck them over. Like, like I was saying and how Ramen reiterated needing the judges on their side and taking the long route. So that's that. I am honestly immensely depressed. I, I wanted to play this game so bad and uh, it's fuck Nexon till the day I die. I don't think I'm ever going to play a Nexon game ever again. I don't think I ever have. Other than, I guess... Final Fantasy 14, which I only played for like three hours. So, doesn't count. And I didn't even know it was Nexon at that point. Didn't even know, ne- like, Dark and Darker wasn't even a, a thought at that point. So, doesn't count. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, we're going to get into uh, Twitch clips now. We'll watch some Twitch clips and then... Uh, fourth, do you want to play some Elden Ring? Do you want to get into some Elden Ring and then we'll do some... Like, we'll play that for a little bit and then maybe once, like, Gaming Slayer comes around or something. I don't know if Ramen's home yet from eating. But, uh, like, after some Elden Ring, we'll play, it. We'll play some Fortnite. <laughs> 